Well, good morning, chaps. Welcome to the vlog. We've had a couple of days off uh, over the weekend because I'm on a little bit of R&R &R trying to get the bursitis in the knee to vanish. So I've had it now, I think we're approaching about 10 days and it's starting to become a little bit of a burden. I'm on glucosamine tablets to try and uh, help get rid of it but apart from pain relief there's nothing anyone else can do. So we're going to go into work today lightly, I stayed off my feet all day yesterday. Uh, but yeah we're going to go in today and just tick off a few jobs on the list. I have kept myself busy at home over the weekend. I've been making soap, believe it or not, and uh, that's something that I want to share with you guys when I get the time, um, but maybe this video is not the right one. But at least it's kept me busy over the weekend and I've been able to do that basically while sat down, if nothing else. So uh, anyway, we're going to jump into the car, we're going to go down to the brewery, we're going to have a look at exactly what needs to be done down there, and uh, yeah, we'll take today as it comes but there's not going to be much physical because I need to just keep the weight off the knee. quite difficult to uh, pick a few jobs to do whilst remaining uh, as physically inactive as possible, you know, to try and get this leg repaired. So uh, one of the jobs that I thought I can start to do is put together um, the final few bits of stainless for the new tanks that we've got. And uh, one of those jobs is these blanking caps, which will eventually look like that with an um, with a RJT nut over there and then they screw into the top of the tanks and then we can connect like a blow-off hose if we need to or something like that to uh, to the top of the tanks to uh, let all the gases out during fermentation and then we remove this and put the spray ball assembly into the top of the tanks to clean them so what I need to do is make that hole happen with uh, the plasma cutter and then we need to clean the hole up a little bit and then weld that on there. In the past I've put half sockets on and screwed these in but let's face it I'm never going to take these off for anything else. So we may as well skip a step and just go ahead and weld the threaded component of these camlock fittings directly to the blanking plate. Seems easy enough and uh, yeah it's going to be easy on the leg this kind of work. So in order to get started here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I will just change the white balance on that a touch. I'm going to go ahead and change the, uh, the tip and uh, the electrode in here. This is the electrode. He just screws out. I'm not sure if you can see this very well on the end, but uh, he's kind of burnt out. He's probably got some miles left in him to be honest if uh, if I was keen enough. Same with the tip. We'll probably get a few more miles out of that but I really can't be bothered to clean this lot up with the die grinder so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and change it and it'll give me a nice clean cut. A sharper edge on the plasma Cutter when I've uh, finished reassembling it all. That's the swirl ring, and then the tip, and then finally the top cap. And just make sure that nothing's been squeezed too tight there, and then we'll screw him home. And there we go. He's ready to go with brand new components. So I find the easiest way to do something like this is just kind of hook the ground cable for the plasma cutter onto my welding table and then just take 
take uh, something like this to hold the workpiece down so it's poking off the edge like that. Does that look like I can work it? Maybe that way around. I'm right handed after all. And then all the sparks from the cut will be directed down to the floor and away. Shall we just uh, zoom in a little bit on that? Right, so I've just got to plug the machine in and then connect it up to the compressor. There's a good chance that the compressor is going to fire while I do this, so uh, I'll tweak the volume down so not to deafen everybody. So let's flick him on. Over here, I've got some cutting glasses that Froggy got me and uh, we'll just stick these on to protect the eyes a little bit from the uh, from the light more than anything else and then what I like to do is just angle the tip like this to start a hole in the workpiece and I'll straighten it up as it's burnt through and then we'll take it from there and we'll go and uh, scribe around the inside of this line that we've got Right, so there we're through, and now we'll just follow the other line. Bingo bango. We got away with that one as well without the compressor kicking in so it's not as neat as one might expect but there's very little dross on the back so just a quick zip around that to get rid of any any carbon um, with the die grinder and then when I put the fitting in when I'm welding I'll just flow all these odds and ends into the joint and uh, It'll take the shape of the base of the threaded fitting as opposed to that shape. So I'll just go ahead and cut the other four and uh, we'll be ready to get the welder out. So see if I can get myself to sit down with this dodgy knee. So what I've done is uh, I've sharpened the tungsten. I've bored out uh, enough of that hole so that we can just about thread some of the uh, fitting into into the blank plate and. Uh, get a good seal around there plenty of plenty of steel to melt into the puddle what I also have to do as well is remember to remove the o-rings and just get some filler rods so just using a little uh, 0.8 filler rod I'll just bend the end over a little bit we'll make a bit of a hook Maybe a bit more of a hook. Maybe this will help. There we go. And yeah, just pulling, pulling all the O-rings out of the fittings. So I know what will happen. I'll forget, and I'll melt one. No doubt. 
and then what we're going to do is put them all in, tack them all up first, so uh, I'm happy with the look and the fit up of all of them, and then we'll go ahead and we'll start to flow, flow the steel in around, uh, around them. I think what we want to do is try and achieve as flush a fit as possible. There we go, look at that. That looks pretty smart to me. Get some gloves on. I put my good set on. My Paraworld Panthers. Courtesy of Mr. Porch Brewing, I think is his channel now. Froggy, thank you very much so. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put our first tack just about here. Oh, and it moved on me. So I've got the welder set to 80 amps on the foot pedal. There's no way I'm going to need all that power, but I've done that because uh, sometimes, particularly when you're tacking up, it's nice to just have a little kick of extra heat to get things moving. So you can just give it that a little dab, a little pulse to uh, to get that weld tack set up quickly because you don't want to be hanging about and effectively or potentially scorching and burning through the back of the steel and making a bit of a cokey mess. <coughs> so I'll just come down for that a little bit and you see the uh, excuse the camera wobble. So let's come in <coughs> Excuse me, put a tack on this side. There we go, so what I like to do is focus the heat on the thickest part of the metal, get a puddle established there, and then if I'm using any filler rod as I did then, then just wick across onto the thinner stainless, and Robert's your mother's brother, a couple of little tacks at six and 12 o'clock, and uh, that's probably enough to hold that whole thing together while I go back and uh, just fill it all in around the edges. But we'll go ahead and do the rest of them and then we'll start to flow on the outside first and the inside second. And the reason I do that is because if you do the inside last then of course the inside is the hygienic part of the fitting. So you know that if there is any coking, accidentally, that it's going to be on the outside of your part and not in contact with your beer or cleaning products. So there's no coking on the outside, which is perfect. It hasn't burnt through. It's just literally melted the two tacks on the back side, which is what we're looking for. That one's a little bit wonky, but the good thing about the two tack system is we can give it a ding with an hammer and strain it up if we need to. But the tolerances for a kit that you're making for yourself are a lot sloppier than if we were gonna be selling this equipment to somebody, so I really don't care, frankly, if it's a bit sloppy. Now this one, the hole's too big, look. So I'm gonna to have to come up with a cunning plan to prevent it from sliding down. 
maybe just tack a little bit of something on the side. Just to stop it from falling down too far. Hey, how'd you like them apples, folks? I think we'll get away with that.